Morning guys, just doing a little bit of an update for today. Not a live one, because um, I'm out and about. I wouldn't be able to read your messages either. Um, but this one's more about the work side and my sort of experiences. Um, I've got to admit, I find finding work in this, well, is it this area? I'm not really sure if Spain in general is like it, because I do see some of the comments in some of the forums around Madrid and Barcelona as well. Um, the difficulties in actually finding work in Spain. And I've also spoken to a couple of people that have got PhDs and some other qualifications that <laughs> they still struggle to... Okay, he's just half stopped his car in the middle of a road and gone to sleep. Um, yeah, they still struggled. And I mean, the viewpoint seems to, well, consensus seems to be that to get a what I'll call a top job in Spain is near impossible for people that aren't Spanish. Now, I can't really comment from the Spanish side on why that is occurring um, because I'd actually need some Spaniards in top jobs to actually tell me why they're like that. But I mean, if you look at the UK, a lot of the top jobs people complain they're all go to men. So. <laughs> So there, there could be other bits that we're not seeing in the big picture anyway. But it doesn't mean I've sort of given up. It's a case of, of sort of looking at other options as well. Um, I mean, I still keep applying on LinkedIn. And it's very easy to connect with people at top businesses in LinkedIn from my profile. Because I've got a profile that's, I would say, fairly high profile from the UK side, but the businesses I work with are, um, I mean, you, you got them, some of the biggest construction companies and clients like Siemens, Siemens, AXA, Ministry of Defense, um, and other large corporations, Shell Oil's another one. Um, so it's very easy to approach people and they'll, they'll add you easy enough, but try and get work out of another thing. Um, so I'm still continuing. One of the things I will say is don't get disheartened. You, you, you all have to sort of step back sometimes and start thinking out of the box. It's like I've seen a job yesterday that seems quite interesting. Um, but I know contacting anybody that seems to be on the sales side so far, they don't even reply to emails, especially around real estate. Um, so what I'm trying to do is actually get somebody who actually owns the company. I get the feeling that some of this is being done by agents that simply couldn't give a damn anyway. So as soon as you go, I don't speak Spanish, they just throw it in the bin. But this, you're probably going to go, oh well, that's, that's going to be the basic consensus for all of those types of work. It's not, because the, the type of work they're after is actually majority, A, majority English, but B, it's for the marketing side, which is something I'm very good at online, which is what they're actually asking for. So, um, I'm gonna try a different approach and try and get hold of the CEO of the company on that one. The UK side had a couple of job offers as well, but they're a bit uh, half in, half out. Um, it's one of the things about being in Spain is they, they then go, oh, well, but you don't live in the UK anymore. And you're like, yeah, but I come in for the contract. It's not a full-time job. It's a contract for a set period of time. Does it really matter? Well, it shouldn't. But with some of these people, they're like that, especially corporations. It's like even home-based roles. They go, oh, yeah, but we might want you to come into the office. Yeah, they know full well they won't and they're not paying for you to come into the office. In fact, if the contract states it's remote working, etc., there's nothing actually saying that you need to go to the office. Um, but it's the way some of the mentality is in the UK, so frustrating. But it doesn't stop me using the US market, which is much more open to, couldn't give a damn where you are. The tax implications are a lot easier in the sense that the business doesn't have to worry about if they pay, paid your tax properly. Um, they don't seem to have the same sort of problems that people have with the UK tax authorities. So that's a good thing. Um, but it's still a bit slow, but 
the main thing is not to give up. The hard bits, in all honesty, um, I got distracted with the restaurant a bit because uh, obviously I was hoping that would actually start moving. In all honesty, but it actually headed in the right direction. It gave us a good foothold in Spain as well as a functional business. Um, and somebody's going to go, I know somebody's going to troll me and go, oh yeah, but it's not your functional business. I didn't say it was my functional business. It's the fact is the guy that owns the place doesn't want to run it anyway. That's, that's the whole point. But it would need to get to a point where it was sustainable and generate enough income for it to stay open. And that's where we'd be looking at, because as long as the bills are covered, I'm not too fussed because I know April could run the place about 70% of the time on our own anyway. It's only like around the runs, lunch period, you'd actually need two people, but also you sort of chop and change between the two of you because you can sit in there on your laptop working as well. Um, wow, bin truck's about to empty, I think, or it's stuck, one of the two. Um, so the, the point being is there's there was some opportunity there and it did I did waste three weeks on it but like I said I got some positive stuff out there in the sense I know that we can actually run a business I'm gonna go this way um, we could run the run their business quite well we'd had the experience of setting the place up um, April got experience in the kitchen etc which also gave her a bit of confidence because now she's done it um, so she's aware of you know the expectations of running running a commercial kitchen, which is a good thing. Uh, so uh, the downside is I wasted three weeks doing it. But also because you lose those three weeks, you sort of stop everything you had had up and running um, because it was quite intensive to get the thing going because it's so far behind in the beginning. Um, so it's sort of like not me back another week because it's sort of trying to get back into the mode of hunting down work. The Total Echo Services stuff will keep building up and that's going to take a, a fair bit of building up over time. It's not going to be a quick... I wish people would learn it part. Um, it's not going to be a quick, quick fix. It's not going to be a business that's going to bloom overnight it's going to be a business it's going to take a fair bit of going to get it where we want it but at the same time as that evolves more stuff will get added to it so it's not a case of giving up on it it's a case of just keep going and keep going when we got um, I mean yesterday we had to go and deal with somebody's electrics because all the electrics had gone off on a, a building along with was another issue uh, what was it yesterday something else happened yesterday but uh, but also um, we've got somebody now wanting four electric fans installed so that's something we'll be doing shortly as well the air conditioning is quite a funny one because I was talking to one of the, one of the subscribers yesterday about it because one of the problems you're getting is you're getting undercut by a lot of people that simply don't bother with any of the compliance stuff. Because um, you're getting people go, well, we'll do it for, you know, whatever price. And yet I see these same, the same sort of people that are penny pinching in the forums later after they paid for the installation when they suddenly got water leaks in the sense that they didn't put the water, um, the condensate on there properly for, for the the water that comes off the system or the system stopped working properly within the next three or four weeks because the, the pipe work wasn't clean properly etc and um, they're then sitting there complaining that don't use these guys don't use these guys well you're the guys that encourage them in the first place you're using people that simply will do it as cheap as possible which often is a case of not a good installation I mean I see it all the time when people go oh yeah we'll just do this just do that oh yeah you need a new one when in fact you may even just need to repair something like a compressor or something's gone on the unit I know sometimes it's cheaper to actually replace the whole thing 
but in all honesty, you don't always have to do that. Especially if it's a decent system. But it does seem that road traders are alive and kicking. But there's enough business to get around. That, that's, the, that's the good thing. I mean, once you get a reputation built up, but that sort of takes time. People need to understand why you, you pay extra for us to do it, which is because we clean the pipes properly, because we um, go through a whole process of how it's going to be installed, what you're looking at, gas recovery instead of gas to atmosphere, and all these other bits and pieces that you're saving a few quid here, but then can't get hold of them when the system fails. Um, in our case, we're not putting a system in that will fail. If it does fail, I'll be very surprised. Um, but anyway, enough grumbling on that side. Um, but it, it's one of those things you just have to keep pushing forward because ultimately there's no easy, easy solution. I'm going to move forward a little bit. I can't know what some of these people are like trying to get out of parking spaces. So, uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. Thanks for watching.